I want to discuss whether the AFL would let James Hurd coach again, partly in response to Ross Lyon's comments on footy classified last night. I actually spoke to Gil, and we'll hear from him shortly, about this exact issue two weeks ago. I want to also discuss some big injury news from the Giants as well, and uh, that concerns obviously Jacob Hopper and Phil Davis, who are both in surgery today. In terms of Dan Hanbury, some more news from St Kilda surrounding his injury status and fitness this morning. I'll have the latest on that. Also, in brief, want to discuss Ty Zantuck, who's back in the Supreme Court concerning his concussion case today. Dustin Martin, will he play this weekend? And the AFL has offered some list relief for a West Coast and Fremantle ahead of this weekend as well. But off the top, this is what Ross Lyon had to say in the context of discussion surrounding whether the AFL would let James Hurd coach again on footy classified last night. I think unlikely that the AFL would allow that happen. Like at the end of the day, we respect James and he's been, but what occurred is what occurred. It was no governance. It was an ejection program and. And he has to have some scars. I don't think you can do a part-time leadership role and then get anointed to the AFL's expansion team that they've worked 10 hard, 10 hard years on. And then you've got AFL assistant coaches like Hanson who are doing their apprenticeship and know I think it'd be a massive call and I think it, it wouldn't be good governance. So Ross, in summary, doesn't think it would be good governance letting James Hurd senior coach again and thinks there's some past scars there in regards to his involvement and contribution to the Essendon Supplements Scandal and Saga. I spoke to Gil McLaughlin when I spoke to him for the season launch about two and a half weeks ago on this exact topic and put these questions to him. And my firm view is the AFL would be supportive if there was an appropriate opportunity for James to coach again at a senior level. But have a listen to Gil. James Heard, would the AFL support him coaching at a senior level again? Of course. Have you discussed that with him? No, but I've certainly had discussions about him coming back into football and uh, I'm pleased to see him playing that leadership role of the Giants. Do you think Hurdy will be a senior coach again one day? I think it's entirely in his court. He obviously can do it. Uh, I think it's more if he wants to do it. The context of this, of course, is there will be discussion this year about James Hurd's role at the Giants and whether he'd be appropriate to coach the Giants or indeed another club if Leon Cameron um, and the Giants parted company. I hope personally Leon Cameron does well. They are zero and two. My information is that Cameron's management up until recently was trying to extend that deal at least by a year at the Giants. That hasn't been done yet. He's out of contract at the end of this year. And as I mentioned, I hope he does really well this year and the Giants do well. They're capable of so much. But of course, James Hurd has got a part-time leadership role, which I revealed um, initially at the Giants. It's now broader than that. It includes um, some sort of weekday coaching as well. He's going up there at least once per week. And I've also reported, as has Mark Robinson from The Sun, The Herald Sun, that the players, a lot of them, are resonating towards James Hurd in a positive way. And Leon's on record as saying that the more support he gets from Hurd and his assistants and help and his, uh, the coaches that are helping out, the better off Leon will be. So he's confronted that issue head on as well. But of course, there'll be discussion this year about whether James Hurd could get back into senior coaching. And there's some context in terms of the AFL's attitude directly from Gill at least a couple of weeks ago. And that was in the context of a, of a wider interview. Overnight, the Giants' injury worries have compounded as well. I caught up with Jacob Hoppe yesterday. He's one of their gun-tough midfielders. He's had knee surgery before Christmas, couldn't get it right, was back at the Epworth seeing Julian Feller yesterday and is having further knee surgery today. My understanding is that could keep him out for up to half the year or 12 weeks. The Giants confirmed as much last night, confirming in their statement following my report that uh, he will potentially be looking at the back half of the season given he's such a good player. Incidentally, Phil Davis is also in having his hamstring surgery today. And this is what Jacob Hopper had to tell me. Yeah, just ongoing issue. Just not quite right. Pushed through a bit with pre-season, but just trying to get it right pretty much so I can get ready for whenever I'm ready to go again. You must be a bit frustrated that you're not out on the park. Oh, yeah, it's frustrating. I want to be playing, of course, but yeah. I think body takes priority right now. I've got to get it right so we can get back out there. And just finally, what's the nature of the, the issue or the problem? Just some lateral stuff, meniscus stuff, just looking at getting that right. A bit of a tie up potentially and then good to go. We want to see you out there and uh, good luck. So big news from the Saints this morning. They've got a selection dilemma. I'll discuss that and also the latest on Dan Hanabry. At the Saints this morning, Brett Radden has spoken. We knew that Dan Hanabry had a latest calf setback in terms of the treatment for that. St Kilda has revealed this morning, came across my desk too, that he will require a little calf fix up in terms of surgery. The Saints at this stage hope it will keep him out for six to eight weeks. It's his right calf, and he'll play a role later in the season. Let's hope that's the case. I'm a big fan of Dan Hanabry's, but uh, that deal, which was a four-year deal with a five-year or one-year trigger to make it five years, 
has been a bit of a financial disaster for the Saints so far. Everyone went into it with the best of intentions, but he's only managed 15 games since he got there at the start of 2019, Hanabry. There's various accounts on the value of his contract, somewhere between $500,000 a year and $800,000 a year. Even if you value it at, say, $650,000 a year, which is conservative, you're talking about you know $170,000 per game. That's the sort of, at least the financial cost of his game so far at St Kilda. It's been a difficult deal, I think, for all parties concerned, in particular the Saints. Having said that, that happens in football. I get it. Um, there's no hard feelings. But Hanabry does require surgery again on his calf. And uh, I'd frankly be surprised if he plays this year, but hopefully he does for his sake. But that's the latest news from St Kilda this morning. They've also got to be an impending selection dilemma because Ryder's ready to come back. They win about 60% of the time with Ryder, only about 41 or 42% of the time without Ryder. He's vitally important, but uh, there's not a lot of uh, ruck spots at the moment in terms of availability because Marshall and Jack Hayes, who's becoming a bit of a cult hero, are both going particularly well. So we'll find out that at the selection table tonight. Concussion in the spotlight at the moment. Ty Zantuck appearing in the Supreme Court as part of his case against Richmond this morning. That hearing ongoing, but the crux of it, the guts of it, is he's seeking an extension of time to lodge his case. There's all sorts of interesting issues coming up in regards to that. In particular, one I found interesting when I was listening to the case this morning as to whether previous video examples of concussion dating back to the early 2000s are sufficient from an evidence point of view to prove that you were concussed at the time. That's being discussed but that's ongoing. He's obviously got his back complaint and also his concussion complaint. So the outcome of that will be interesting for Zantuck today, whether he gets an extension of time on that hearing. Some of the people involved in his case back in the early 2000s, in particular, for example, Danny Frawley, unfortunately aren't with us anymore. Having said that, some of the medical staff that were at Richmond are. So there's uh, an evidentiary issue as to whether it's fair for that hearing to proceed. That'll be sorted out today. Um, Dustin Martin hasn't been back at Richmond this week. Hasn't been back at Richmond since he left, is my information. I've reported that this week. Certainly hasn't trained this week, and I think it's fair to say will not play this weekend. West Coast and Fremantle, obviously decimated uh, in particular West Coast by these COVID protocol cases. I spoke to the AFL a short time ago. Both those sides will get an extension of time to lodge their teams this week. They won't have to lodge a team tonight, and they'll be able to lodge their final teams as late as Saturday afternoon or Saturday night. So the AFL clearly working, uh, just trying to help well, not help them out, but help them out as best they can as they navigate those rather complex COVID issues. A massive night tonight. Buddy Franklin back in action. The Bulldogs trying to avoid going 0-3. and three. There's lots of focus and emphasis on their defence in terms of bleeding goals. It's a famous defence that's held them in such good stead over the past four or five seasons, but it's being a bit exposed at the, at the moment. And no doubt Buddy Franklin will be trying to expose it tonight. It's so a Thursday night footy on Triple M. Don't miss that. There's lots of news going on as well, so don't uh, miss our podcast again tomorrow. That's the latest for my podcast today. Listen to the football and watch the footy tonight. It'll be magnificent Thursday night football. That was Tom Brown's news. Come back every Monday, Thursday and Friday for more and subscribe to Triple M Footy on Listener or wherever you listen to get all our podcasts throughout the season. For Ream Hot Water and McDonald's, Triple M rocks footy.